It's that time. That time. Time to kick off Sports Extra. Brought to you by Bantera Bank and the SIU Credit Union. Now, News 3 Sports Extra. Sports Extra. Welcome to Saturday Sports Extra, a bittersweet day for SIU football as they lose one of their star players. That story and highlights coming up later in the show. But first, we're going to start with the high school football playoff pairings. All the area's teams finding out their matchups for next weekend's games tonight. We start in Cesar. That's where the Cesar Valier Waltonville Woodlawn football team met up today after their 9-0 season. The Red Devils were the only team in Southern Illinois to finish the season undefeated. And while they were there, they found out who they would be playing in the first round. The Red Devils will be matched up with Nashville. The Hornets finished the season 5-4, winning their last two games of the season, as well as a big win against Anna Jonesboro along the way. SVWW head coach John Shadowins says his team is ready for the challenge. We've heard they're physical. We haven't seen any film yet. We heard they're big and strong up front. Heard they're pretty physical. Um, know some of the scores that you know they they played going awfully tough. There's nothing like it. My senior year, I've only remember one time a home playoff game uh, when I was little and uh, just playing in front of the fans and uh, just giving our our town something to look forward to. Is there's nothing like it. In other 3A playoff matchups, another River to River team will be taking on a Black Diamond opponent, Anna Jonesboro. We'll make a trip over to Carterville in the first round. The Wildcats have the 13 seed. The Lions a four. The last matchup in 3A has DuCoin hosting Hillsboro. But in 4A, both Deep South representatives were sent on the road. Massac County is an 11th seed. The Patriots will visit 8-1 Breeze Matter Day. Harrisburg gets the longest road trip in round one. The Bulldogs must make the five-hour journey to take on unbeaten Quincy Notre Dame. Also in 4A, Mount Carmel gets a home game against Mohamed Seymour. And Belleville Althoff out of the South 7 will travel to Effingham. Well, a total of four South 7 teams made the playoffs. The other three all will be 5A. After ending Heron's playoff hopes last night with a 30-14 win, the Marion Wildcats will get a home game in round one. The Wildcats take the number four seed into the 5A postseason when they welcome Decatur MacArthur. Marion is 8-1 on the season. The Generals come to town at 6-3. Although not official, this game will likely be Saturday night. Coach Kerry Martin likes the thought of seeing a different team in the playoffs. There are 1 through 16 will create these matchups you haven't really seen before, and there's a lot of exciting matchups in it. We kind of like where we're at in the bracket now. It's just a matter of uh, getting a good game plan together and uh, hopefully having a, having a good ball game against them. Also in 5A, Carbondale gets a tough draw. The Terriers must go on the road to face unbeaten Springfield's Sacred Heart Griffin. Cahokia is the three seed. The Comanches will be at home against East Peoria. And now a look at the 2A second season. Chester will host number nine Redbud in a battle of seven and two teams, while 15th seeded Johnston City hits the road for a matchup at second seed Petersburg. Fresh off last week's win against Northern Iowa, the football Salukis had to avoid the letdown today as they returned home to take on Youngstown State. The Dogs in search of their 11th straight Missouri Valley win. And as we showed earlier in the first, Andre Elliott is going to chase down and sack Saluki quarterback Chris Deeker. And on the very next play, you can see Deeker grabbing for his collarbone as he threw the screen pass to Deji Kareem. Deeker left for x-rays. He ended up with a broken collarbone. He could be out for the rest of the season. With Deeker out, others had to pick up the slack, starting with the special teams, the block punt. Here, Rashad Graham comes up with it. He's ruled down at the two. Southern would then punch it in a couple plays later to make it 7-0. Then it's up to the defense. Heron's Kyle Walker with the sack. And finally, Deeker's backup, Paul McIntosh, his first pass completion as a Saluki this season to Joe Alaria and Alaria does the rest, tiptoeing the sidelines and making quick work of 86 yards. It's the second longest pass completion in SIU history. The Dogs led 14 to nothing at the break. The defense will continue to have Penguins quarterback Brandon Summers here. Brandon Jordan with the sack and McIntosh took care of business on the other side of the ball, leading the Salukis in rushing with 81 yards while completing 10 of 14 passes for 133 yards and a score. The end result, the 27-8 SIU win. 
You know, Coach told us all season that we were going to go through adversity, and that's basically what happens when you go through adversity. You know, we had a guy drop out, but that's the thing that makes championship teams the thing that they are, because you can lose a guy and another guy steps up and not miss a beat. Huge, my first pass was a five-yard pass, and it ended up being, I don't know how long the touchdown, but that was always a huge boost. Uh, like I said, our guys just made plays. We had a couple of huge blocks on that play also. I mean, just everybody stepping up whenever Deacon went down was huge. SIU wins 27 to 8. Paul McIntosh with 133 yards and passing in relief for Deaker. Corey Lindsay, the defensive standout, 12 tackles and two interceptions on the day. The dog next play, Indiana State next Saturday. Other MVC scores, South Dakota State takes down Northern Iowa to stay in a tie with SIU for first place. Indiana State snaps a 33-game losing streak, beating Western Illinois 17 to 14. Missouri State takes care of North Dakota State 21 to 17. Well, from the gridiron to the other type of football, soccer, as it's known to the rest of the world, Marion and Carbondale have met in some pretty physical meetings so far this season. Today, a regional title on the line. The Wildcats wrapping up their first ever South 7 Conference title last week, but it was Carbondale coming out firing in this one. Less than a minute into the game, Eddie Umana putting the Terriers on the board one zip. Carbondale would make it 2-0 just minutes later, but Felipe Cortez leading the Marion charge back later on the half cuts it to 2 one and with less than five to go on the first half coach told Connor Murphy just put it in and Murphy making it look easy coming through ties the game at two and the Wildcats would get the go ahead score from Cortez on a penalty kick later in the half Carbondale though making things interesting in the 66th minute Sean Bauman cuts it to 4-3 Terriers were down but Cortez the Wildcats MVP out there today three goals and Marion your regional champs and they're moving on with a 5-3 win. To 1-8 cross country regionals today in Harrisburg. It was a great day for West Frankfurt. Alexis Stevens finished first on the girls side at 22 minutes 10 seconds. Haley Elders of Heron was 27 seconds behind her pace. Redbird Sydney McPhail finished fourth. Overall as a team West Frankfurt takes first with 24 points. Heron, Murfreesboro, Harrisburg and Vienna also will advance to sectionals at Edwardsville next week. And the boys got things going a little after the girls meet. Mason Tippy of Murfreesboro is your winner with a time of 18 minutes, 32 seconds. Harris Nathan Lukens takes second. The Tigers and Red Devils have the top four runners in the meet. Murphy takes the regional with Heron, Goreville, Harrisburg, and West Frankfurt also advancing to sectionals. And results from the Chester Regional today. We start things off with the girls. Sparta girls going to take second behind Allie Egemeyer's third place finish. Teammate Melissa Bradshaw came in fourth and we mentioned the Bulldogs coming in second as a team. On the boys side of things, the Bulldogs Wade Reeves gets the three second individual win over Nashville's Kiefer Hyman. Sparta places three runners in the top five for the top for the team win rather. Pinckneyville finished runners up. And that's going to do it for us here on Saturday Sports Extra. Don't forget our half hour playoff preview show kicks off next Friday at 1030. Until then, good night. CSI is up next.